Hello and welcome to this latest episode of the Miramichi Historical Linkages Podcast. I'm Sean McCarthy, uh, joined by my colleague Tasha Smith and our special guest, Clara Daly. Uh, Clara, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. So, uh, Clara, you're going to talk to us a little bit about today, about, uh, you know, your time uh, coming from Sweden here to the Miramichi, uh, and a little bit of some of the uh, the uh, re historical research that you've done connecting um, our two countries and our two communities. Um, so I guess to kind of lead off and maybe provide a little bit of context to the viewer, um, we probably should get into a little bit about how you and I know one another, um, that... Uh, Wow, it's been uh, I guess what it's a uh, what twelve years ago now. Um, yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's it. That's it. So we know one another for 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 for, for, uh, for a little while. Um, your That's husband right. is my best friend. Uh, yep. <laughs> and my best friend too. There you go. That's it. That's it. <laughs> and we're also on very good terms, yeah. you and I. You know. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's it. It's it's not quite an equilateral triangle, but it's it's probably a solid isosceles. I feel like you know. <laughs> very yeah. good. Very good. Um, yeah. So um, while while. Uh, Thomas, my my friend, your husband was out in Vancouver. You and he met, and then uh, you know eventually uh, went to went to Sweden together, and then uh, married in in, in twenty eighteen. Uh, That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm born and raised in Sweden, and after high school, I wanted to take a break before going to university, so I went to Vancouver on a one year travel and work visa. And one night I met this man from Miramichi in an Irish pub. And yeah, it took up from there. <laughs> then I stayed for quite a while in Vancouver to be with Tom. And then he went to Sweden with me. And we were there for quite some years before we decided on relocating to Miramichi. Well, we're happy to have you uh, back here in the community, back on the semi wagon Ridge. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So, um, if you don't yeah. mind me, oh, sorry, Sean. Cash, go right ahead. I was going to say, if you don't mind me asking, um, was there a reason why you guys decided to move back to Mary or for to move to Mary for you, but um, back for him? Well, um, well, a lot of different reasons, really. We wanted to be with his parents, and um, he found it hard with the language in Sweden, and we oh. thought. Yeah, there was different kinds of opportunities for us here. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. I was kind of curious, like, was there research involved too, or? Um, no, yeah. No, just more of a personal preference? That's yeah. Right. Yes. That's right, yeah. I don't blame and, you as one bit. <laughs> yeah, no, they, yeah. So Thomas is born and raised here, and he has his parents here, so... That's uh that's probably the biggest reason. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So before that time, of course, I mean you had visited the, uh, you know, Miramichi on a number of occasions. Um so uh as as a visitor now as a resident, maybe uh, could you give us kind of a, a little bit of your 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 impressions of the community um uh, as you found us in those years and as you find it today? Yeah. So the first time I came to Miramichi was for Christmas in 2012. And I was living out in Vancouver then. So it, I've already been to Canada, but it was the first time I was in another province, but uh, British Columbia. And I met my in-laws for the first time. And yeah, it was, it was quite different from British Columbia. <laughs> the nature and the size of the city. And yeah, my in-laws live out in Barnaby River. So that's quite quite a rural place. But it, it reminds me a lot about my home in Sweden. It's similar to like, it's yeah, the city is of similar size. And my father lives out in the countryside. So that's similar to Barnaby River too. And Sweden is like 70% forest, which I think New Brunswick is about that same percentage percentage as well so it has a lot of similarities it's like same same but different mm -hmm. and we came yeah the first time it was in winter so it was quite cold and snowy and yeah 
no, I I liked it, but it was it was different and it was exciting to see something new. But I wasn't necessarily in in love with the place. And uh, it was also yeah, a lot of places were closed down because it was Christmas and it wasn't the same as if I would have gone in the summertime. I think. And yeah, we, the main reason we went was to see Tom's parents for Christmas, and it was. A nice change, fun to see it. I got to try Dixie Lee for the first time, and it was, it was, yeah. But, but I don't know if I thought like too much of it, and yeah. Then we moved to Sweden shortly after that, and we came back like most summers for quite some years, and that was like every time we came. I kind of liked the place better and better, and it seemed like more small businesses opened, and they like all these unique little things, and yeah, it really like kept on. It, it was growing on me, and on Tom too. Like he was like a lot of people growing up here seemed to want to leave, but then they also want to come back eventually. And I think it might be like a diff, uh, mixture of. Um, yeah, all these new things that seem to open in Miramichi, all these little businesses, companies, stores, uh, very unique things, which I really enjoy. And, but also maybe like getting older and like liking this, like, yeah, maybe wanting a different life for ourselves too. And like maybe don't want that big city life anymore, but want the cozy city life or even out in the forest, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, it has really, like, I'm impressed about all the different small businesses and the entrepreneurs and yeah, it's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. And even for being a small city, it seems like there's always things going on. No, absolutely. And I think that's a really good point to kind of say that, you know, as people change, so do so do communities. I think, you know, we often kind of think of, you know, places as being very static. But I think, you know, you, you make a really good point that um, even in the last, you know, uh, 10 years, there's been a lot of growth and a lot of change here in Machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard it feels, I'm not sure, but I, it, I seem to think that it was a lot of like mills had closed there around 2010, 2011. So maybe it wasn't the most booming time. But since you've gotten the pay centers and things has really like taken mm. off. So in the course of, you know, those years, as you say, you've, you, you, you've done a lot of work, uh, Clara, in kind of connecting uh, your your first homes, your current home, you know, um, beyond the connection that you represent in yourself. Um, so maybe kind of tell us a little bit about, uh, about, about that and some of the historical research that you've done. Yes. So someone told me that Nordin is like of Swedish ancestry or like there was a Swedish man who settled and that's why it's called Nordin. So I always found that very interesting. And, but I didn't really know too much more about it. But then my husband got me this book. Um, I have it here. Swedes in Canada. Because, yeah, as I'm myself an immigrant now, I found it interesting to read about other immigrants. And has there been any other Swedes? Because um, when I lived in Vancouver, they, we had like a Swedish society or community. And but because there was so many Swedes or Scandinavian people out there, but here I don't really know of, I don't think, any other Swede. I know of some in New Brunswick, but I don't really know of any in in Miramichi. Maybe some that has like their like some great great grandmother was from Sweden, but um, not really any like first or second hand. But yeah. yeah. So I thought it was interesting to see. And so I got this book and it does mention Nordine and Miramichi a couple times. Uh, so that's kind of interesting, I find. And it does, yeah, that it actually mentions like Miramichi River and it was someone named O.W. Nordine that came to Nordine and they opened like a sawmill. And that's why it's 
named Nordine today. And yeah, there's yeah, some little information here in about that. And they also had a post office from 1905 to 1968. And yeah, there's a, some different interesting things hmm. here. And also, one time, me, my husband and I, we were, we were in Sweden, we were visiting my grandmother, and she is actually from Norway. I'm three quarters Swedish and one quarter Norwegian. Uh, and yeah, we were visiting her house and we were looking in some old family books where it said that this relative had moved to Moncton, New Brunswick, like way back. And it just caught my eye. This was, we were still living in Sweden at the time, but, and I don't know if we were even thinking about moving here at that point, uh, but it was interesting to see Moncton, New Brunswick, that's so close to Miramichi, like, oh shit, what if Tom and I are related after all? And uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, yeah, it, it caught my eye and like, I thought that was interesting, but at this, yeah. I was interested about it, but it, I didn't like make too much of it either. But then someday I was thinking about it. So I wanted to look up the name of this relative so I could like take a deeper dive into it. But then my grandmother didn't really remember what book it was I meant. And so it kind of died out. And, but now being here again, it, I was, I started to think about this again. So I was, I wrote to, yeah, my grandmother isn't with us anymore, but I wrote to her sister to ask if she maybe had this same family book and if she could take a look and see if she could find the name of this man. And she found him and it said that he lived on this address in Moncton and he had a wife and five daughters and their, all of their names was there. And uh, I thought, well, I'll see if I can find any of them. So I did a search on Facebook and I found these, the daughters, uh, but they seem to now live in Ontario. So at some point they had like left the province and I, I sent a message, but it was, it was, it took a while to get their attention because it went in the junk folder because we weren't friends. And, but eventually someone found my message and um, I, yeah, I'm now in contact with these, these relatives of mine. And at first, I wasn't sure exactly how it were, how, like what the relation was, because uh, it was, it didn't quite say in the book. But I have since found out that my great great grandfather, it was, yeah, my great great grandfather's brother went to Canada. And I think it was in 1905, but I haven't gotten that quite confirmed yet. Um so yeah, he moved to Canada and then he had kids and who had kids and there's these five women. And one of them actually do live outside of Moncton and the other ones they live in Ontario. And yeah, we've been chatting away and it's it's quite interesting. So but that's on my Norwegian mm. background. And uh, yeah, so these women would be like my dad's third cousins I guess my fourth cousins or yeah um so yeah it turned out like I thought just like oh it's interesting we're related but I wasn't sure how but it was kind of like closer than I actually I could have imagined because <laughs> it turned out too this uh, like great 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 grandfather he had a lot of children with three different women and but it is with the same mother that we're related so it's like even tighter, like, yeah, they weren't half siblings, they were full siblings. Yeah. So I might go sometime down to the Moncton area and meet one of my fourth cousins, I guess. How but exciting. Yeah. yeah. So I'm talking to one man too, he would be some kind of a cousin to me. He's in Ontario and he's quite into this heritage and family things he's working on like the canadian side of the book i think and he's looking into like some of my the questions i have but yeah it's quite interesting you never know like i had no idea that i had like relatives in moncton and but there we go 
you said he was writing um, the Canadian side of a book. Uh, I'm sorry, I might have missed it. What book is um, being pu- written about? Well, it's this um, like it's a family book about this man and his family. Uh, it's called. It's yeah. The book was like the book that I was looking in, and I found that someone had moved to Moncton. But that one is written in Norwegian, so I think he kind of like translated it to to, oh. to English. Oh, yes. okay. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. But otherwise, uh, as far as I know, I don't have any relatives in Mermachi. So far, so far yes. in the safe zone. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, it has. Yeah, you. Look, I don't really know any other Swedes, but I was in. Boys Town one day, and I started talking to a woman in a park, and she told me that she knew someone who had come from Sweden to work as a lumberjack, and he married her friend, and yeah, there. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of Scandinavians, but there is. You can find some when you least expect it. <laughs> yeah. Few but very powerful. They all make a great impression. Yes. I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Clara, also, uh, I know uh, just again from conversations that we've had and, and, and with Tom, you know, I know that you're interested in maybe bringing uh, some of the uh, the culture and traditions uh, from Sweden to the Miramichi in honor of that connection that exists between our communities. So would you be able to tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, well, we have a big holiday in Sweden that I love. It's called Midsummer. And I think that everyone should get to experience a Swedish Midsummer. So that would be a really fun thing to do in I5, sure. I think. And yeah, I don't have any plans right now. It's just ideas, but I would like to sometime, yeah, pull off a big Midsummer party celebration. So you'll have to... Stay tuned for hmm. that, I guess. Okay, you got me. I was going to ask you, like, what consists of a midsummer party? <laughs> yeah, I've never well, heard it's, of this before. It's celebrated on, I think, it's always on a, it, I, I think it used to be, or supposed to be maybe June 21st or 22nd, but it's been made so it's always like on the Friday closest to the 21st or something like that. So it's always on a Friday nowadays. And in Sweden, it's a like a public holiday. And you make a maypole that you dance around and you usually make like flower wreaths for your hair. So you look all cute and pretty and you dress up and you eat food. And mm. it's we usually have like a smorgasbord in Sweden, like a buffet of different things and uh, it can be like different kinds of fish and uh, potatoes there's usually potatoes you might barbecue some things and maybe strawberry cake and some nice drinks and yeah whatever whatever you like and yeah so you usually it you usually meet quite early in the day and have a lunch and you start making the mail pole and you usually like do that together because you have to cut some greenery and flowers and decorate it and make it yeah like put it up and you might like walk around pick some flowers to make your flower wreath for your hair so you could have like a class where you learn how to make that and then you just enjoy yourselves you dance around the maypole you might play some games and you eat you talk you dance yeah that is awesome i'm sold where do i sign up but, yeah <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what we can do it would be good to have it in nordine i'm thinking since that's the old swedish place but we'll see i'll keep on i'll, I'll work on it there's also if you're gonna if you're unmarried and you there's like an old because yeah there's a lot of traditions behind this so it depends on like how deep you want to go but if you're unmarried but want to get married you should walk around on seven fields 
And you should not talk while you do it. You should walk around on seven fields, pick seven different kinds of flowers. And when you go to bed, you should put those flowers under your pillow. And then you'll dream about your future wife or husband. Is that done uh, during that time of the midsummer party, like the night before or after? or? Yeah, I think it's done between the between Midsummer Eve and Midsummer Day. Yeah. Very good. So for all you, uh, you you lovers out there who are looking for somebody, you know, right around the 20th, yeah. 21st of June, you know what to do now. <laughs> Seven fields I'll send out a reminder. Flowers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's always a good time. Some people do like big family parties. Some people do more like friends. It's, it's up to each and every one. I will be going to Sweden this summer, so I'll be in Sweden for midsummer this year, so I can get some inspiration, but maybe next summer we'll have something big here in Miramichi. Well, we certainly look forward uh, to hearing more about that. And uh, yeah, like you never know. Maybe next, maybe this time next year, uh, or I guess in a few months, you know, next year, maybe we can do a live podcast from Midsummer's uh, in in Nordine. Uh, maybe yeah. so. So there you go. That can be our goal. Oh, there, this is it. This is it. So subscribe to the channel, yes. folks. <laughs> you know what I mean. Click the bell icon. Make sure that you know what I mean. You get all the updates so that you can be a part of that as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So. Right. Back to kind of your research again on Nordine. Um, now, you can, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, were, were some of the recruitment, uh, you know, of, of uh, workers and migrants, you know, from Sweden, was that something, or did I dream that, uh, that was something that maybe the Swedish government was not so keen on? Uh, there was something in here. Let's see. Page 26, I think. Yeah, they do mention in this, um, this book again, the Swedes in Canada, uh, that companies requiring specialized workers sometimes set up immigration schemes. Schemes or schemes? Teams. Thank you. So workers were required to sign contracts for a spe specified period during which the time they paid back the cost of their transportation through wage deductions. And Swedish authorities discouraged immigration schemes. In 1903, the Davidson Lumber Company built a sawmill at the mouth of the Miramichi River with O.W. Nordin from Sweden as manager. And in September of 1905, a New Brunswick government representative asked Mr. Karik, the British vice consul at Gävle in Sweden, to assist Nordin in hiring workers experienced in sawmill and wood separations. In all, 114 men were hired. Uh, and then the Swedish government su successfully sued Karik for having illegally acted as an immigration agent. But the judgment was later overturned. Yeah, there is some more here about that they, you know, kind of like fooled people into coming here, maybe. And I know, I don't know if that was specifically for Miramichi, but it was somewhere in Canada. They, they like put up these flyers in Sweden that you should like, oh, you should go to Canada. But there was maybe photos of somewhere in southern USA, so it looks really like warm and nice, but then they came here and it wasn't that very warm. Mm, yeah. But yeah, for Miramichi specifically, they actually did this scheme. Mm. This is it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where, uh, yeah. Where, where you'll come to celebrate midsummer before our summer really has started. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's true. And maybe that's why there ain't so many Swedes here anymore because they were like <laughs> fooled to come here. Who knows? <laughs> but yeah. Well, uh, that's that. That could be. But we're certainly, but we're certainly glad. Um, uh, of course, generally here on the river, but certainly here in this podcast, uh, that you've decided to stay, Clara, and that uh, you've decided to uh, to join you. us here on on this uh, on this episode. And as we draw to a close uh, this week, is there anything else uh, you'd like to you'd like to say before we wrap up? No, 
I think I don't think so. I'll have to come back if I find out more good things. Please do. Uh, we would welcome that absolutely. Uh, Tasha, anything Thank more uh, from from you before we uh, we close? Uh, I'm the same. I am good at this time, but if I'll definitely make sure I prepare some more questions for the next time Clara joins us. <laughs> Sounds good. So I'll make three and we'll close for this week. Thanks so much to Clara for joining us and uh, best of luck in her plans uh, going forward. Uh, and thank you all for joining us and tuning in this week. We certainly hope to, to see you again very soon. And of course, if you haven't watched um, several of our past episodes, uh, be sure to take a look at those as you wait for our next episode, which will be back in two weeks. So until then, thanks so much and all the best. <laughs>